okay so another important notion is that of a so let g be a group and let a b in g let's take an element of it so i want to define the subgroup generated by a is the subgroup so the subgroup generated by a so that is the term i am defining here is this set so this if you spell it out it looks like this it has e it has a it has a squared it has a cube it has this it has also a inverse it has a minus 1 squared which is under our notation a minus 2 a minus 3 like this okay so this is denoted by let's say this symbol the subgroup generated by this the definition of this is this so the subgroup generated by a is denoted by a within these brackets first of all why this is certainly a subgroup this is a subgroup right i'm trying to define a subgroup generated by a why is this a subgroup so it's very clear right because identity is there if you multiply two things here it is a power n times a power m so it is as i commented in an earlier video when i was looking at an example you can take uh, usual exponential rules so if you multiply two powers of uh, a you get another power of a and inverses are also there because a inverse is there a squared inverse is a minus 2 and so on so this is a subgroup not only that if a subgroup h of g contains a then a power m is in h for every integer right because if h contains a and h is a subgroup the properties of, of a subgroup says, say that a inverse is in h a squared is in h e is in h so a power 0 is in h a power minus 2 is in h and so on so all powers of a are in h in other words h contains the subgroup generated by a all this is supposed to imply and all this implies that the subgroup generated by a is the smallest subgroup of g containing a nothing smaller than this can contain a because once it contains a the group properties guarantee that if a subgroup contains a it must contain all of these elements okay so it's important to this is an important notion so subgroup generated by an element okay so now a very important definition here about groups a group g is called cyclic it's a cyclic group if there exists an element a in g such that the subgroup generated by a is g okay so in other words g must be all powers of a
so g if g consists only of powers of a specific element then we say that g is cyclic okay so this is an important class of exam uh, groups for example z under addition is cyclic it is cyclic because what is the subgroup generated by by one so namely this what is this this is equal to z because you take zero you you take all multiples of one so you take one two three times one four times one you take zero you take negative of one you take twice the negative of one thrice the negative of one four times the negative of one this is equal to the subgroup generated by one but of course this is z also so z is cyclic and it is generated by one so if g is a cyclic group there is an element a such that the subgroup generated by a is g so in this case we say that G is generated by A or A is a generator of G. In our example, 1 is a generator of G. In fact, minus 1 is a generator of G also. Um, z one is a generator of z as i explained here but minus one is also a generator of z because minus one multiples also cover all of z is two a generator of z is two a generator of z to answer this question, consider the subgroup generated by 2. This is all multiples of 2. Right? In, in the general notation, I called it all powers of 2. But here the addition is the operation, so it's all multiples of 2. And we, we have a name for this. It is 2z. But this is not equal to z. So 2 is not a generator of z. In fact, no number other than 1 and minus 1 is a generator of z. Okay, so, so now some more notation here. So let us now go back to a general situation. Let G be a group and let A be an element of it. I want to define the order of A. is is the order of the subgroup generated by this if this is finite okay order of an element a is the order of the subgroup generated by that element if the subgroup is finite otherwise if the subgroup is infinite we say that we say that the order of A is infinite. Order of A is denoted by we denote this by order ord A. So order of A recall again is it is uh, it is obtained by looking at the subgroup generated by A. If it is a finite subgroup, if it is a finite group, we say number of elements of that is the order of a otherwise if the subgroup generated by is not finite then order of a is infinite okay so as an example g is any group 
order of the identity element is always one. That's clear, right? Because what is the subgroup generated by E is just E. Only things it contains are powers of E, which is just E. So order is order of E is one. So order of the identity element is always one. On the other hand, if you take the integers, what is order of A? If A is not zero, this is infin infinity. If A is not zero. Because for any non-zero element, so this is not uh, if a is non-zero. If a is zero, order is one. If a is non-zero, order is infinity because the su subgroup generated by that is going to be infinite because it is a z. It has infinitely many elements. So now I want to do this important example, and it's uh, you require you are required to remember from an earlier video what s three is. So remember S3 is recall, S3 was um, the group bijections, group of bijections of a three element set which we denoted by 1, 2, 3 and in the video when I discuss this in detail I use the notation F1 f2 f3 f4 f5 and f6 to denote all the bijections so i would like you to compute orders of elements of okay and uh, answer the question is s3 cyclic Okay, so I won't do the details and I'll let you do the work. You can stop the video here and do the work. And uh, no, no, I don't mean uh, you can pause the video here and uh, do the calculations, but uh, I will give you the answer in case for you to check. So uh, if you remember the notation of uh, this F1 to F3 from F1 to F6 from the uh, one of the earliest videos, so you can. Uh, Remember that F1 was the identity um, bijection. So order of F1 is F1 is 1. Order of F2 and order of F3 and order of F4 uh, would will all be 2. Okay. So for example, you will if you do the calculation, you will see that the subgroup generated by F2 is just F1 and F2. because f2 squared is just f1 f2 f3 f4 were permuting two of the three numbers and third one is kept fixed so f2 fixed 3 and sent 1 to 2 2 to 1 so f2 squared will be identity so the subgroup generated by f2 is just f1 comma f2 so order of f2 is 2 so this is similar to the same is true for f3 and f4 on the other hand if you look at f5 and f6 the subgroup generated by f5 is actually f1 f5 and f6 uh, i also asked you in an earlier video to completely describe the multiplication table of this and if you did that it would be clear to you that uh, our subgroup generated by this is this so ORD and which is also same as subgroup generated by F6. So ORD F5 and ORD F is 6. So you have three elements. You have one element of order 1, three elements of order 2 and two elements of order 2. So S3 has one element. of order 1 always any every group has one element of order 1 three elements of order 2 and two elements of order 3 now the question that i asked earlier 
is S3 cyclic. Okay, so remember uh, from a earlier slide. What is a cyclic group? So somewhere I missed this. Yeah, so a subgroup, a group is cyclic if there exists an element A in G such that A is, a is the generator of G. So now is S3 cyclic. You have three possible elements. Do they generate S3? Does F1 generate S3? Certainly not because F1 is identity. Does F2 generate S3? No, because F2, the subgroup generated by F2 is just F1, comma F2. Does uh, F3 generate S3? No, again, order is 2. So similarly, F4 does not generate S3. But neither do F5 and F6. So because the subgroup generated by F5 is simply three elements, not all of S3. Similarly, subgroup generated by F6 is three elements. So S3 is not cyclic. That is a point. So as this example shows, I will give this as an exercise and um, I will let you work this out in detail. It's a good exercise to understand the concepts. A group Let's say a finite group. Let G be a finite group. Let's say of order n. So it has n elements. Then G is cyclic if and only if G contains. an element of order n because uh, remember g is cyclic means g must be equal to the equal to a sub, subgroup generated by some element g has n elements so if g is cyclic g must contain a sub element whose sub, subgroup generated by which has n element n element so that element is order n if g contains an element of order n then the subgroup generated by that element will be of order n but G already has n elements, so the subgroup also has n elements, so G must be equal to that. Okay, so the proof I just said orally, you should combine all the details I said and conclude that a finite group is cyclic if and only if it has an element whose order is equal to the order of the group. Okay, so also another exercise for you, and this one I will quickly work out. Suppose that G contains no subgroups different from E and G. So note that the every group, as I remarked earlier, every group contains two obvious subgroups, namely the trivial subgroup and the full subgroup. Suppose that some group G does not contain any other subgroup, okay? Then G is cyclic. Why is this? So I will write a solution for this. Okay, so suppose uh, we take an element. Okay, so actually if G is actually all of E, G is a single element group, then it is cyclic, right, because this is certainly cyclic. So assume that G is different from E. So that means G contains some element different from E. So let's say A is in G, A different from E. Now consider the subgroup generated by A, um, which is uh, 
which we denote by this symbol. So is uh, it it cannot be equal to this, right? Because A is not e equal to E, and the subgroup generated by A certainly contains A, so it's not equal to E. Now, what is the hypothesis on the group G? It it says that G contains no subgroups different from E and G, right? This is a subgroup. A the subgroup generated by A is a subgroup. It is different from E, so it must be equal to G, right? Because G contains subgroups, no subgroups other than the trivial subgroup and the full group, and we have constructed a subgroup which is different from trivial subgroup. It must equal all of E. So G is cyclic by definition, right? As soon as you have an element whose subgroup generated by which is equal to G, G is cyclic. So that completes the solution. Okay. So I will now give you some important subgroups. For any group, so now let G be any group. Okay, so I'm going to define a few subgroups which are very important, and we will study them later. The first one is the center of G denoted. Z of Z of G it is all elements let's say G in G which have the property that A G equals G A for every Okay, so you, you need to stare at this for a minute to understand this carefully. Center of G denoted by this symbol is the collection of elements of the group which commute with everything else. So AG must be equal to GA for every small a in G. Okay, so the proposition is that ZG is a subgroup so let me prove this uh, the previous slide contains the definition of zg what is a subgroup we must show that it is closed under the operation of g so let's say g1 and g2 are in zg to prove we want to prove g1 g2 is in zg right we want to prove this what does this mean? In order to be in ZG, it must commute with an arbitrary given element of G. So let's take an arbitrary element of G and see what happens to G1, G2 times A. This by associativity of the group is G1, G2 of A. Right? I can put the bracket here. But G2, remember, is in the center. So G2 commutes with A. So this is G1 of times A G2. But again applying the associativity, this is G1 A times G2. Now I'll continue here. G1 is in the center. Let's use that now. So it is A G1 G2. Again using associativity, it is A G1 G2. So now we are done because G1 G2 times A is A times G1 G2. So that tells me that G1, G2 is in ZG. So it's ZG is closed. Is the identity element in ZG? It is certainly there because E times A is A times E equals A for all A and G. So certainly the identity element always commutes with everything. So that is okay. And finally, if A, if G is in ZG, is G inverse in ZG? Let's check. So if we want to check G inverse times A must be equal to A times G inverse. Uh, 
so what is this so this is if you do so i claim that this is equal to a inverse g inverse so if you recall i gave an exercise or i mentioned this in an earlier video a b in any group a b inverse is b inverse a inverse so this is uh, i am applying that here so i am basically applying this g inverse a is the inverse of i have to interchange the letters here so it's a times inverse of a times g the whole inverse okay so this is correct right but g is a element in the center so g commutes with everything so this is g times a inverse inverse nothing i have only interchanged within the bracket i have interchanged these two but now again applying this this is g a inverse whole inverse is a times g inverse okay so g inverse is in set g so hence set g is a sub group this completes the proof so the center is a sub group consisting of all elements that commute with everything so as an easy exercise for you if g is abelian then what is a center center is a set of elements that commute with everything so certainly it must be everything okay so this is not surprising one more, one final thing i'll define in this uh, video and we'll stop after that so let g be a group and let a be an arbitrary element the centralizer so this is the definition centralizer of uh, of a denoted c of a is c of a is all elements of the group which commute with a okay so earlier when i defined the center it is elements of g that commute with everything a g equals g f for every a in g now i don't care about everything i i fixed a and i only defined it to be all things that commute with that specific element so as before and this i leave for you as an exercise and uh, prove it maybe in the next video c a is a subgroup of g the center is always contained in c of a for all a in g okay and also if g is abelian it is clear that c of a is equal to g for all a in g okay so these are three exercises for you and i will maybe comment on some of these in the next video so i will stop now we have in this exam in this video we have looked at definition of a subgroup we have looked at various examples of subgroups we have shown that all subgroups of z are obtained as multiples of a fixed integer we have looked at uh, subgroups generated by an element and defined the order of element cyclic groups and finally we have defined center of a group and centralizer of an element of a group